In problem six, Raspberry had the following transactions during the current year. He sold a factory used entirely for business purposes, realizing a $20,000 loss. He received $100,000 in insurance proceeds for the destruction by fire of another factory used entirely for business purposes. His adjusted basis in the burned factory on the date of the fire was $150,000. He sold equipment held for business purposes for $20,000. He originally purchased the equipment for $15,000 and took $9,000 of depreciation on the equipment over time. He received a $50,000 condemnation award for an unimproved parking lot operated as a business. His adjusted basis in the parking lot was $40,000. He does not plan to replace the parking lot. Assume when necessary that all the above assets have been owned over 12 months. What is, what is the result of these property transactions? Okay, so we've got our friendly chart here. If you need to pause the video and create your chart, go ahead and do that. But we're going to go through these transactions. Now, in the other videos, we actually had transactions A, B, C, D, and so on. This one, it's just a bunch of transactions. These are all during the tax year. Let's label the transactions first because that way we can label these on the actual chart as we go. Okay, so the first transaction is going to be the sale of... The factory, so I'll put that above the uh, the sale of the factory. The second transaction is he received $100,000 in insurance proceeds for destruction by fire of another factory, so I'll put that over here. That's number two. Number three, he sold equipment, so I'll put that one here where he sold. And then four, he received a $50,000 condemnation award for an unapproved parking lot. We'll call that one number four. So there's four transactions. So this one isn't too bad, only four transactions. But remember, it's important to use the chart. The chart is very important. So in the last problem, we didn't really have section 1245 issues. Now we get 1245. We got to worry about that. Okay? So let's go through each of these transactions. So the first one, he sold a factory used entirely for business purposes, realizing a $20,000 loss. So we know it's a $20,000 loss. Right? Our, our first step normally is to calculate the gain or loss, realize and recognized. Okay? Well... We're told the loss, realizing a $20,000 loss, that's going to be recognized, right? Because um, it's a sale. <laughs> There's no non condition rule that applies. So we've got step one and step two done. We recognize a $20,000 loss. The next step is characterization. And ultimately, remember, the character column, once you finish that character column, you finish the problem. When all the characters have, have been provided, the ultimate characters, that last column. So so again, in number one, sold a factory used entirely for business purposes, realizing a $20,000 loss. So it's a factory used for business. So we go through our steps. We determine if it's cap a capital gain, capital loss under the general rules. Remember, you need a capital asset and a sale or exchange. Do we have a capital asset? No. Why not? It's number three in our list. It's a factory that's used in business. Real property used in business is never a capital asset. So it can't be a capital gain or capital loss under the general rules. So where do we go next? 1231. 1231 we then consider. Remember section 1231. We've got the sub-hodgepot and the main hodgepot. The sub-hodgepot applies to involuntary conversion, specifically natural disasters, thefts, ship shipwrecks, right? But that's it. The main hodgepot has condemnation, eminent domain, seizure, requisition by cities and states and local governments. And also it has sales or exchanges of business property, number two or number three on our capital asset list, held for more than a year. Everything in 1231 has to be held for more than a year. Now remember, in this problem, we're told that everything has been held over 12 months. So number one, two, three, four, everything's held over 12 months. All right. So again, no capital gain, capital loss under general rules. We're in 1231. It's a sale of business property, business factory held for more than a year. Where does that go? Main hodgepot. We have a $20,000 loss in the main hodgepot. Before we put that down in the main hodgepot, <laughs> right? You're starting to write it down. Before we do so, we have a new consideration, section 1245. So section 1245 applies to Personal property, it's been depreciable or amortizable, and also to gains. We have neither of those. This is real property. A factory is real property. Also, it's a loss. So guess what? Section 1245 does not apply. So what does that mean? 
we're safe to go ahead and put down the $20,000 loss in the main hodgepot. So we put $20,000 in the main hodgepot. We'll come back later and we'll net the main hodgepot to determine the actual end result. Okay, let's go on to number two. Number two, we're told that he received $100,000 in insurance proceeds for the destruction by fire of another factory used entirely for business purposes. His adjusted basis in the factory on the date of fire was $150,000. We're not given the gain or loss here. So we start by calculating that. We've got $100,000 amount realized, right? What's that's what, that's what we receive. Minus $150,000, sorry, $100,000 amount realized. That's what we get. Minus $150,000 adjusted basis. We've got a $50,000 loss. It's an involuntary conversion. The non-recognition rule is not going to apply. Why? It's a loss. 1033. So step one, step two, the $50,000 loss will be recognized. Okay? So the next step is step three, the characterization. We go through our general rule. Is it a capital gain, capital loss? No. It's not a sale or exchange. It's an involuntary conversion, right? We've got a fire. So it can't be a capital gain or capital loss under the general rules. All right? So we've got a $50,000 um, fifty thousand dollar loss that is not a capital gain, capital loss under the general rules. Then we go to twelve thirty one. We've got a fire, right? So that's a sub hodgepot because the property is business property held for more than a year. So sub hodgepot fifty thousand dollar loss. Before we put it in the sub hodgepot, we got to ask: Does twelve forty five apply? No. It's again real property, and it's also a loss. Twelve forty five applies to personal property with gain. Specifically, capital gain or 1231. So it's it can't be 1245. So we go ahead and put fifty thousand dollars of loss in 1231 sub hodgepot. Okay, let's go on to number three. Number three, he sold equipment held for business purposes for twenty thousand dollars. He originally purchased the equipment for fifteen thousand dollars and took nine thousand dollars of depreciation over time. Again, we don't have the realized gain or loss here. So we calculate the $20,000 amount realized minus the adjusted basis. How do we calculate the adjusted basis here? We're going to have to adjust. We're going to take the original purchase price of $15,000, right? The $15,000, we call that the unadjusted basis. If you buy an asset under Section 1012, the cost basis is what you use. So when we initially get the property, we have a $15,000 cost basis. We then subtract away any depreciation taken. That's $9,000 of depreciation. So our adjusted basis is $6,000. So the $6,000 is the adjusted basis we use in calculating the gain or loss. We've got a $14,000 gain. It's a sale, right? He's sold. So therefore, whenever you sell property, there's no non recognition rule that applies. So the realized gain or loss will be recognized. We've got a $14,000 realized and recognized gain. Okay, now we go to step three, character. We're selling equipment held for business purposes. So it's not a capital gain, capital loss under the general rules. Why? Because it's not a capital asset. It's number three on our list. It's personal property subject to depreciation or amortization, right? That's used in business. So we go on to 1231. We've got the 1231 main hodgepot. 1231 main hodgepot applies to sales, of number two or number three on our capital asset list, business property, right? Held for more than a year. Everything in this problem is held for more than a year. So it looks like it's going in the main hodgepot. Before you put it there, we got to worry about 1245. 1245 applies to personal property that's subject to depreciation, and there's a gain, specifically a section 1231 or capital gain. Well, this would be a section 1231 gain if not for section 1245. So the lesser of rule for 1245 applies. We got this $14,000 gain, right? We're saying that the lesser of the depreciation taken, which is $9,000, or the $14,000 gain, whichever one, whichever those lesser numbers. Of course, the lesser is $9,000. That portion is considered Section 1245 ordinary income. The rest, $5,000, goes to the main 1231 hodgepodge. So we actually have two rows here. We put $9,000 in the section 1245. That's going to be considered ordinary income. 
We also have another row because the remaining $5,000 goes in the main hodgepodge. We have to separate the rows because that first row is automatically considered section 1245 ordinary income. When it's 1245, it's going to be subject to ordinary income. There's nothing that can change that. So we can go ahead and classify that as ordinary income. The $5,000 in the main hodgepodge, we've got to net that later though, in the end. We can't, we can't determine the characterization right now. We've got to net that later on. Okay, so that's number three. Number four. Number four, he received a $50,000 condemnation award for an unimproved parking lot operated as a business. His adjusted basis is $40,000. We have to calculate the gain or loss, amount realized, what he gets is $50,000, minus adjusted basis of $40,000. We have a $10,000 gain. He does not plan to replace the parking lot, so he just uses the cash, meaning that Section 1033 involuntary conversion cannot apply. So that means that the $10,000 gain will be realized and recognized. So now we go to characterization. Step three, we start off our general rule. Do we have a sale or exchange? No, it's condemnation. Condemnation cannot be a sale or exchange, right? That's not sale or exchange. It's not a voluntary event. So that means it can't be a capital asset under the general rules. So we move on from the general characterization rules of capital gain, capital loss to the special rules of section 1231. So is it section 1231? Well, we think, we think about sub hodgepot, right? The sub hodgepot for section 1231 applies to involuntary conversions, specifically natural disasters, theft, shipwreck. That's not what we have here. We have condemnation. Condemnation, seizure, requisition, eminent domain, those kinds of things by the city, state, local government, those go in the main hodgepot if you hold them for more than a year, right? That's what we have here. We've got business property held for more than a year that's due to city, state, local government action. That goes in the main hodgepot. So before we put that $10,000 gain in the main hodgepot, we got to worry about Section 1245. Does it apply? No. It's real property, right? 1245 recapture only applies to personal property. This is a parking lot. Unimproved parking lot. That's real property. Therefore, Section 1245 does not apply. So we put the $10,000 gain in the main hodgepot. And we are done with the individual transactions. Now we can do some netting. All right. So we start the section uh, 1231 sub hodgepot. There's only one transaction. So therefore, the net result in the sub hodgepot is a negative $50,000. So everything in the sub hodgepot is treated as what? Ordinary. So uh, the second transaction results in an ordinary $50,000 loss. So now we go to the main hodgepot. We net everything in the main hodgepot. And again, we get a loss. We get a loss of $5,000. So that means everything in the main hodgepot is considered ordinary. So the character is ordinary. Look at this. All transactions in this problem are ordinary. This just shows you that ultimately everything might end up ordinary. Okay. Now, the last step in the problem is to consider unrecaptured section 1250, which applies to only on real property that's been depreciated. However, it also only applies to gains, specifically long-term capital gains, or net section 1231 gains, which means that it would ultimately result in a long-term capital gain. So the way I do it is I look at the last column. If anything is long-term capital gain, you got to ask, hey, is unrecaptured section 1250 applicable? And the answer is no, it's not. Why? Everything is ordinary. Remember, unrecaptured section 1250 only applies to long-term capital gain section 1H ideas. It also applies to section 1231 if it's a net gain. But the idea is it's that special rate for long-term capital gains, right? 20%, 25%, 28 it's a 25% rate rather than 20% rate. But everything's ordinary. So it's 37% for the highest rate. Right? So it makes no difference. So we're done with this problem. Before we conclude the video, though, let's just summarize. So the steps you do this, right? We calculate the gain or loss in the transaction. That's step one. Realize gain or loss. Step two is you determine, okay, is it recognized? For all these transactions, it was recognized. It was either a sale or, or it was either a sale 
where remember, there's no non-recognition rule that applies because you're getting cash. Or if there was a non-recognition rule for involuntary conversion, well, if it was a loss, you can't get non-recognition on that event, only gains. And if it was a gain, we're specifically told they're not going to be able to use it in similar in service or use property. So therefore, it's always going to be recognized in this problem. So they're all recognized here. So then we go to characterization step three. So within characterization, you start with the with characterizing it under the general rules of capital gain or capital loss. You need a capital asset with a sale or exchange. So we did that for all these and they all failed that. So then we go on. The next step is to consider if it's section 1231. We ask it sub hodgepot or main hodgepot, right? We went through that analysis. We determined, okay, almost all of these were section 1231. We then asked, well, they were initially. Then we ask, are any of them, if they're section 1231 or long-term capital gain or short-term capital gain under the first rule, any of them subject to 1245? We saw that in number three, the truck, or I'm sorry, the equipment, we saw that it was sub subject to section 1245. Okay. After that, we then break apart if there's anything left of depreciation recapture and 1231 gain. And we, we did that in number three. That's why we had the two lines. After that, we then go through each transaction and we net the sub and main hodgepots, right? We do them separately. Sub hodgepot first, then main hodgepot. Ultimately, we see what the character is. The final step is then to determine if there's unrecaptured section 1250 gain, which we didn't have any of that here because everything is ordinary. The last thing I want to do is I just want to say, what happens if I change the problem? And I told you the equipment, rather than equipment, the equipment is a business patent. So it's a patent used in business. It was, a, it was purchased many years ago. It's a patent held for business purposes where it was purchased for $20,000 and he originally purchased the patent. So this would be patent for $15,000 and took $9,000 of amortization on the patent. Would there be any difference in this problem? The answer is no. Section 1245 would apply whether it's tangible or intangible property. doesn't matter. Okay, It's called Section 1245 depreciation recapture, but it also applies to amortization as well. So if you buy a patent and you're going to sell it for $15,000 gain, you've depreciated 9000 sorry, amortized $9,000 of that, got a $6,000 basis, you're going to have a 9000 Section 1245 ordinary income on the patent, and you're going to have $5,000 of Section 1231 uh, gain in the main hodgepot on that sale of that patent. All right. So we have more problems to go through that go through these concepts. Let's continue on in other problems.